Today's Jolly Hour video is brought to you by SeatGeek. Baseball season is in full swing, and that means you can get $20 off tickets at SeatGeek with promo code JOLLY. If you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. I've got the app on my phone, and it's by far and away the easiest way to buy tickets. Whether it's concerts, baseball, football, festivals, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. I'm a huge Mets fan, and I've used SeatGeek to buy numerous Mets tickets this season, and you should too. SeatGeek wants to make sure you're getting a good deal, so look for the green dots. Green means a good deal, red means bad. If you understand stoplights, you'll probably understand their system on their website and their app. And don't worry, I've got the hookup. Like I said before, use code JOLLY for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with the promo code JOLLY. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app and use my promo code today. Thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. All right, it's finally time. Pretty much since the beginning of this channel, people have been requesting a video about Jason Bay. And I can't lie. I've been avoiding it. I don't love being super negative about players in my videos in general, but Jason Bay is a special case. I only started intently watching baseball every day in 2009, and my favorite team, the New York Mets, were a super stinker of a team that year. But in that offseason, they handed out a mammoth contract to former Boston Red Sox and Pittsburgh Pirates outfielder, Jason Bay. He was a slugger, and I was rightfully pumped up to see this guy don the orange and blue and crush home runs at the New City Field. And as most of you know, this is not really how things went down. His peak and subsequent valley are so extreme and so abrupt that it's almost hard to believe how this all went down. So we're going to tell his story today. It's surely a tragic one, but it's one worth telling for sure, especially for the highs of his career. I've ducked it for almost two years now, but the dust has finally settled. Let's talk about the curious career of Jason Bay. Bay was originally taken in the 22nd round of the 2000 draft by the Montreal Expos. He rose through the minor league ranks quickly before being traded to the Mets before the start of the 2002 season. They trade him to the Padres at that year's trade deadline before he could get a big league at bat. He'd debut for the Padres in May of next year and hit a home run for his first major league hit. Not too long after, Bay was traded a third time, this time to Pittsburgh along with Oliver Perez in exchange for Brian Giles. Third time's the charm as Bay would finally be able to settle in with the lowly Pirates. His first full season was 2004 and he'd missed the entire first month of that year due to surgery on his wrist in the offseason. Even though he missed 40 games that year, Jason Bay was far and away the best rookie in either league that season. He led all qualified rookies in home runs with 26, RBI with 82, slugging percentage at 550, and weighted runs created plus at 130. For reference, Bay was in the same rookie class as Kevin Euclid, Jason Wirth, Adam LaRoche, Matt Holliday, and future AL MVP Justin Morneau. And in his sophomore season, Bay was only getting better. With his wrist injury no longer hampering him, Bay was at full health and played all 162 games, one of just four players in the National League to do so that season. Since 2005, only four players have had a season with 30 home runs, 20 stolen bases, and 162 games played. AL MVP winner Alex Rodriguez in 2005 for the Yankees, NL MVP winner Jimmy Rollins in 2007 for the Phillies, and Manny Machado in 2015 for the Orioles, all three of them joining Jason Bay in 2005 for the Pirates. Pretty good company here. Bay made his first All-Star team in 2005 as well, but was the only player on either team team to not get into the game because bad luck has to persist throughout this entire story. Still, it was a massive breakout for Bay, who reached the top 10 and even top 5 in several major offensive categories in the National League. Despite finishing top 5 in runs scored, OPS, and weighted runs created plus, as well as a top 8 finish in each stat of the triple slash line, Bay would finish outside the top 10 in National League MVP voting. And it's not necessarily surprising why, being that the Pirates that he played for were very bad. Still, the Pirates recognized the talent they had on their hands and locked Bay up to a team-friendly 4 year extension worth $18 million. For an MVP caliber outfielder who had missed zero games in a full season just the year prior, an annual value of $4.5 million was an absolute steal for Pittsburgh. 2006 was another terrific season for Bay as he became one of just 18 players since that year to record a season with 35 home runs or more and over 100 RBI and over 100 walks. That's a 16 year time span, so just about one player each year does this. He was the only one on this list to also steal over 10 bases, establishing himself as a true threat on all sides sides of the ball. He became the first Pirates position player to be voted into the All-Star game as a starter for the first time in 16 years. The extension was a fantastic fit for both sides, as Jason Bay entered his prime, becoming one of the brightest young outfielders in the entire game. From 2004 to 2007, Jason Bay led all Pirates hitters in plate appearances, runs, doubles, home runs, RBI, and walks. To be fair, this was a fairly easy thing to achieve, being that the Pirates never won more than 72 games in any of Bay's seasons in Pittsburgh. They were never known to be an offensive power, 
Warehouse. Jason Bay was also just one of nine players from 2004 to 2009 to record over 180 doubles and over 180 home runs, a list that includes Albert Pujols, who won three MVP awards in this span, as well as future Hall of Famer David Ortiz. But come 2008, with the Pirates still not contending and Bay's deal winding down, it was becoming clear that the logical next step was to trade the all-star outfielder at his peak value. In an exciting trade market that featured the likes of CeCe Sabathia and Mark Teixeira, Bay was one of the most sought-after trade pieces come July 31st. He would be traded to the defending World Series champion Boston Red Sox as part of a three-team trade. The Sox got Bay, the Dodgers got Manny Ramirez, and the Pirates got a bunch of prospects that never amounted to much for them, so par for the course. Bay and the Red Sox would be a perfect fit. Fans were averse to Bay at first, being that he was essentially Manny Ramirez's replacement, but he'd win them over with a torrid offensive performance in his first trip to the playoffs in his career. Bay tormented the Los Angeles Angels in the 2007 American League Division Series, hitting a game-tying home run in Game 1 that eventually enabled a Red Sox comeback win on the road, and then he hit a three-run home run in the first inning of Game 2, giving the Red Sox an early lead that they'd never relinquish. After a 12-inning marathon loss in Game 3, Bay doubled in the ninth inning of Game 4 in a tie game, and he scored the walk-off winning run that clinched a series victory for the Red Sox. Overall, he went 7 for 17 in a monstrous playoff debut with two walks, two doubles, two home runs, and five RBI. Boston fans had plenty to be excited about, with Jason Bay still under contract for another season before he'd finally hit free agency. 2009 would be arguably Bay's best season as a major league slugger, as he set career highs in both home runs and runs batted in while making another all-star team and securing his first career Silver Slugger award. In fact, no American League outfielder had more home runs or RBIs than Bay, and he also maintained the third highest slugging percentage and weighted runs created plus of this class as well. Jason Bay is one of just four Boston Red Sox players in the expansion era to hit over 35 home runs with over 110 RBI and over 90 walks in their franchise history, joining a class of David Ortiz, Carl Yastrzemski, and Mo Vaughn. Coming off his fifth consecutive year playing in over 145 games with some of his career best numbers, Bay looked to be the most lucrative outfield free agent of the 2009 class at just 30 years old. He had many suitors, but the eventual winning bid was a four-year, $66 million offer by none other than the New York Mets. I want to stress this part especially. There was really no reason to suspect anything amiss about Jason Bay's contract with the Mets. New York had put together three winning seasons before their 2009 meltdown and were looking to get back on track with new emerging talent as well as some free agent splashes, the biggest one being Jason Bay. Things actually started off well enough, with a 14-9 and month of April and an 18-8 and month of June. At the end of the third month of the season, the Mets were 10 games over 500 at 44-34 and and well in reach of a playoff spot. Jason Bay even had an OPS of 808, which is a pretty good mark. Even I myself forgot how well things had started out in the first half of Bay's first year in New York. Granted, the main gripe people had with Bay was his lack of power, as he had just six home runs through his first 75 games with the club. But still, the numbers don't lie. Bay was getting on base, and he was getting his doubles where he could, so his numbers were fine. So far, so good. This would also be about as good as it gets. Despite being an absolute beacon of health for the past five years, with no extended injury list stint since 2007, Bay would play just 20 more games in 2010 before injuries kept him sidelined for the remainder of the season. Concussion issues plagued Bay, and he slumped in July trying to play through it before finally sitting out to heal. He wouldn't return to the field that season as the Mets tanked through the final three months of the season with a 35-49 and record. Bay finished his first year in Queens with a 105 OPS plus and just six home runs while playing a little over half the season, which was not ideal in the slightest. Injuries and cruel park dimensions definitely sapped the power of not only Bay, but the entire Mets team, yet fans remained disappointed. City Field was truly cavernous and really not a good fit for Jason Bay, who benefited from the close left field wall of Fenway Park. But Bay was just 31 years old and had monster seasons before, so with three years left on his deal, there were still chances for him to rebound and return to form, right? Right? Wrong. More injuries many more injuries. 2011 opened up with a bruised rib injury that sidelined Bay for the first 20 games of the season. 2011 would be his most games played as a Met in a single season at 123 following this injury, but Bay still wasn't himself. His OPS remained under 700 from May through August of that year, as his rib and concussion issues continued to bother him, as well as many ailments he racked up along the way. However, he did turn a corner in September of that year with 10 extra base hits, 13 runs batted in, and a 954 OPS being all monthly highs for Bay as a Met. Bay even won NL Player of the Week in this month, so although it was another lost season overall, the most optimistic Mets fans still held out hope that Bay could turn a corner in the final two years of his big contract, right? Right? Wrong. God. 
we do a broken rib in the first month of the 2012 season that sidelines Bay for a month. Not enough? Okay, how about we do seven games back from that injury only to get another concussion and sit out another month after that? Still no good? Okay, how about playing most of the final two months healthy and still finishing with a 165 batting average? Does that suffice? Jason Bay hit just 26 home runs in three years as a Met, 10 less than the 36 he hit in his contract year with the Boston Red Sox. Finally, at the end of the 2012 season, the Mets and Jason Bay mercifully agreed to terminate the final year of his now cursed contract. Bay played one more season with the Seattle Mariners in 2013, but after getting designated for assignment there, he called it a career after 11 seasons in the bigs. Of players with at least 1,300 plate appearances from 2010 to 2013, only Michael Saunders at 225 had a lower batting average than Jason Bay at 227 among outfielders. It is hard to put into words just how drastic of a drop-off Bay's career took when he played for the New York Mets. 11 years later, I am still wrapping my brain around it. I think I do take solace in the fact that Bay sustained most of his injuries while trying to make game-winning plays for the Mets. Laying out to make unreal diving plays or battling through physical ailments to take at-bats he knew wouldn't go well. He even moved to center field when the Mets had no one healthy to play that position, a job he volunteered for. Bay clearly tried to play up to the value of his contract and really tried to win over New York fans. It just never worked out. Not every big leaguer gets to ride off into the sunset. In fact, most of them don't, and the ending of careers is usually sudden, abrupt, and unfair. Much later on in 2019, in an interview with The Athletic, Bay reflected on what retirement means to him and how he accepted his playing days were finally over. In a quote, he said, I remember guys telling me back when I played, you won't get it until you're not playing anymore. You won't understand. Well, now I do, but I take great pleasure in doing mundane things with my kids because I was gone so much before. It's been cool to be around my family. Bay did get elected to the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame and did some work as an analyst in his post-playing days, but he's done with all that now. He's a good human being, and I hope he's doing well. His peak was some seriously good baseball, but his falloff is maybe the most perplexing of any Mets player I've watched day in and day out. 11 years later, I don't understand it, and probably 50 years later, I will continue to not understand it. Those late 2000s, early 2010s Mets are just cursed. There's no way around it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I finally did it, guys. I finally did the Jason Bay video. I'll see you guys next time.